Okay, <clears throat> welcome back. Quickly recap for the first game. We see that uh, Fabi played uh, Slav. Uh, good preparation, but Black should have been okay. And at some point, I thought it was in Black was... Actually, Black was suffering all the time, but uh, knight g8 is the Slav move of the idea of knight e7. And also knight can go to c6, so knight d7. It's kind of strange allowing white to get that f5 in. So Black was really suffering the whole game. And just when he equalized, actually, he almost equalized here, right? Um, queen b4, make more active move, put the queen on c4, kind of more active piece. But bishop d8 was very passive and... Um, and this uh, blunder queen f4, but it's already the position is very difficult, especially in the time trouble the, with this um, really fast time control. It's impossible to defend. All right. So um, the first game between Hikaru Ding, we see standard stuff, anti Berlin. You know, Naka is going for this um, uh, crazy line. I think Gary Kasparov used to play this actually with White. He was better at some point. Alexeyenko also played this as White sometimes, uh, these types of structures. And I think uh, Nakamura was actually better at some point, but he messed up some tactics. He, H6 here with the idea of knight g6 was probably interesting. You know, forcing Black uh, to play g5, for example. And right now, then um, White also missed a huge chance here. Black made mistake with rook c6. And White now missed a huge chance to play Queen H4 with the idea of Knight E7, right? This was a small tactics that he missed. And of course, White Knight has to go to F5 here, attacking the D4 pawn right away. Because right now, the Black managed to put his rooks on the 6th rank. And, um, yeah, but Black missed the C4 trick, which uh, ended up actually being uh, in an equal position. So it's a fair draw, fair result. So with that being said, we're going to go to the... Um, we're gonna go to the main chat. Uh, hi Arden, yeah, thank you. So that was a quick recap of the first round. Uh, let's see what happens uh, here in the second round. And um, I hope people can see this. Ooh. Yeah, all right. All right, took me a great deal of time to figure out how to do that, but um, hopefully people can recognize me here. All right, so... Um, Going back to the second uh, game, we see Catalan here, which is uh, probably something that uh, Hikaru should expect, actually, because he plays Queen's Gambit all the time, right? So we see Dinga play, playing this uh, Catalan, like, very main line. It's considered to be nothing special for White, but uh, this is kind of position that Ding really excels in, because he's getting more space, superior pawn structure, I remember I lost a game like this against Dink at the 2013 uh, World Team Championship tournament with Black. I was suffering, and uh, in the end he just killed me. Uh, so I don't know why he why he car would want to play something like this. In March, almost 10,000 accounts were closed for cheating. Seven title players. Yes, uh, they have the yeah they have the report actually running every month. How many accounts they closed? Yeah, but since the title Tuesday is the title of the uh, Tuesday tournament, right? Um, so only title players play there. And uh, seven title players uh, obviously close for cheating, but that's March, right? That was way before they started uh, to do the title Tuesday on a weekly basis, right? So we are expecting, I mean, which is the reason why he wrote this email to everybody on the chess.com, is that because we already had two editions, right? Um, no, actually, we had already three editions of Tuesdays in April. And with each edition, there are more and more suspicious characters, right? That's what I'm calling them right now. <coughs> so, frankly, I'm expecting way more than seven title players to be, you know, their accounts to be closed this uh, after at the end of this month. So again, Ding got an advantage. Let's see what happens here. I see Fabiano getting huge advantage in the opening, as usual. So let's see what happened here. Another Queen's Gambit declined, but this time White actually is playing for this main line, I believe, right? Uh, I think this, li this, li this line was actually championed by Gary Kasparov in his match against Karpov. If, I'm, if my memory is correct. Uh, however, he did something wrong here with white. Yeah, he had to play king f2, queen d2. Obviously, black is gonna go for that c5, so you need to leave this knight on e2 so he can go to d4. Right, instead you put this knight on f4. 
Yeah, I think Vashia the Graf was actually quite tired. I think he doesn't look very happy playing in this tournament. Probably not realize, you know, how long this is gonna be. And um, I don't know why he lost this knight e5. Why not play queen e3, right? Makes perfect sense to put the queen here, block this diagonal instead. You sort of allow black to bring this knight with the tempo. Now get black gets perfect structure 3 versus 2 on the queen side. And uh, black is better. Yeah, so Fabi is doing better. So um, I expect Fabi actually to play the smash and win it very comfortably. Hi, guys. Um, hi, uh, Radigast. Yeah. All right. Victory sign. Yeah. All right. It's also our hi. Yeah. yeah it's like uh, hi. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, there's a nice emoticon with the hi. There's this baby yeah, doing this uh, hi thing. So I can't beat that. <laughs> yeah, definitely not competing with that one. So, um, so Fabi is doing great, yeah, he's got advantage, he's got a uh, very strong uh, pawn majority, white has the isolated pawn, open king, so white's attack on the king side is gone nowhere, and the whole plan of this uh, opening line for white was to actually to try to attack on the king side, and now he is sort of uh, playing with the ruins in his position, so I'm not understanding what is uh, Maxim uh, was planning in here, right? 3 versus 2, isolated pawn, pair of bishops, obviously white grabs the bishop on e6, black is gonna have field day, you know, with all this, uh, since the bishop controls the square, then potentially, you know, black threatens to put rook here, if you get something on d5, it's probably just uh, really bad for white. So we're gonna go back to ding game, and we see that ding decides to actually trade the pair of knights. Um, I'm not sure if such trade was necessary here. Uh, let's see the evaluation here. Um, it's black to move, right? Black to move. Ah, the computer. Wait, wait, wait. Um, no, it's white to move, right? So I kind of like white's knight in c3 because it takes so many squares under control, like b5, d5, right? He closes the c file. Um, I don't know. Um, personally, I wouldn't... You know, maybe 94k. Maybe. Um, rook takes, oh, that's the idea, he wanted to attack this knight on e5 and force f6 or something, right, because if you force f6, then a lot of uh, light squares, you know, will be possible to use them, and if uh, black just moves his knight, white has, uh, white is going to play b4, so his two pawns here will actually control black's three pawns on the queen side, and white will have very strong uh, potential center grab, but after rook e8, uh, yeah, I really... <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, the playing this type of positions against Ding is like a really brave, really brave thing to do. That's in my opinion. Um, why aren't you in this tournament? Um, um, which tournament? In this tournament? Come on, guys, be serious. I'm I'm retired. I'm twenty six hundred uh, seventy sixty elo. I'm old. I'm very slow, you know, it's uh, easy for me to comment, you know, having engine at my disposal, which will confirm or uh, refute my uh, claims uh, to the positional plans in the position. But if you are playing there, you're playing every day, it's, it's a huge endurance event, actually. You know, instead of calling this Magnus Invitational, they should call it Magnus Iron Man Tournament, you know. Magnus, just an idea for you. Next time you make a tournament, call it Magnus Iron Man Tournament, all right. You heard it from me first. All right, there you go. Free idea. Okay, um, so um, b4. Hi, guys. Uh, could, could black have played knight g6? Yes, uh, that's what I expecting also. I mean, uh, the rook, this rook should be on the d file. I really don't like this rook e8. So the computer says, ah, knight g6, you mean here? Yeah, well, the computer refuses by playing queen c7. Yeah, he hits all the stuff. And of course, if white gets this pawn on b7, then. This uh, bishop will be hitting this pawn, and a6 pawn will be weak, and black's pawn structure will be absolutely ruined. So if we go, for example, with something like this, right, it's already extra pawn. If you go for the f2 pawn, it's nothing special here because uh, there is no attack, right? So if you go for something like f5 now, it's going to be rook e6. Oh, knight f4. All right, so check first, preventing that knight f4 trick, right? And then rook e6 and f4, for example. And boom, there is no attack. A lot of a lot of uh, pins, right? Queen g3, and this pawn is just winning here, right? Because it's going to be protected with the bishop. So that's the reason why he played rook e8. 
P4, and you see how the computer evaluation slightly begins to um, upgrade for white, because uh, you know, two versus three, right? Uh, the knight on e5 is not very stable. White is gonna probably play rook d4, queen d2, control this file, and then go for f4, e4, and then of course finally rook d7 some point, so that rook can do some havoc on the seventh line. Um, but that would be probably interesting. But right now, white basically wants to keep his pins going. Because it's very unpleasant for black to play this position. I fully expect c5, which is the first line, because black does need to start exchanging these pawns before white can get to them. All right, so that's uh, that's a good idea. Um, all right, thank you guys. Uh, thank you uh, for subscribing and following. Uh, they're just very tired. Andromeda, thank you for subs subscription. All right. Um, all right. So I see you guys like this uh, my uh, new emo, right? Yeah, it's definitely better than some dude, yeah, with the hat. All right. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. Okay, so I'll probably have to do one with the hat, right? Uh, I just don't can't find all my uh, baseball hat. I have baseball hat? Yes, yeah, from US Championship. Oh, I have a US Championship baseball hat. So I, I'll probably want to do that. Fabi won a similar endgame against IM two weeks ago in TT. If only I seen that game. I'm not sure. Um, all right, so let's see what happens here. Queen f2, bishop d6. No, I mean playing. Ooh, bishop f4. Wait a minute. What does computer say about this line? Bishop f4. Actually, the first line. Hmm. Interesting. So basically, Fabi wants to go into the opposite color bishops because white king is way open, right? And uh, the bishop on d5 will be extremely strong. But of course, you know, if white manages to exchange all the heavy pieces, it's a draw. On the other hand, if you play, I expected actually bishop d7 here, it's just to keep the pair of bishops, but maybe he was afraid of knight d5, knight c3, possible exchange of the dark squared bishops, living white uh, with the queen and knight. Okay, so I understand. All right, so this actually makes sense. f6, probably a little bit too loose, yeah? Probably. Well, he wants to... Yeah, and d5 is great, great practical decision by uh, Maxim. He just, you know... Exchanges queens, makes it absolutely safe. It's, um, you know, opposite color bishop, rook and game, which should be absolutely equal. I mean, it's not absolutely equal. Black has an extra pawn, but there's huge chance for a draw. We know that Maxim actually, I think he beat somebody uh, earlier in this tournament, right? He had an extra pawn. I think it was Geary something, um, right? So, um, very good uh, drawing chances for white. Actually, black just gave up the spawn. I don't understand this. Yeah, I don't understand why he just gave the spawn. Probably he didn't believe that he can win this game, so he just went for a draw. Alright, so uh, basically, Fabi had huge advantage with black and he, he went for a draw. That's his prerogative. Now he has only two more games to go. He's leading plus one. Understandable. So, bishop h3, g6. All right, so that's the minus of playing h h4 here. You you're giving actually black nice some squares, and the computer plays h5, and now bishop f3 would have been interesting. I actually like bishop f3 more, uh, but okay, bishop h3 is also looking at potential bishop c8 there, right? So um, yeah, no problem. Um, well, you'll get tired too when I get paid next week. Uh, you don't have to, Andromeda. I mean, you don't have to, man. I, I really already gifted so many subs, dude. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, I already appreciate your all the help. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, French School of Suffering. Um, uh, will be your yesterday fight with Cheaters and Title available on YouTube? Oh, well, I generally, you know... Um, uh, you know, save my uh, streams because uh, they like have limited days, right? I save them on YouTube. I just uh, without editing. I know a lot of people edit stuff, and um, yeah, I, I I don't because uh, you know that, that kind of, because then you kind of lose your original train of thought. It will be really difficult. Plus, you know, editing job is hard. It's hard. So um, yeah. So probably, yeah, so I'm usually putting all the title Tuesdays, all my Blitz games, all my streams on YouTube later. But just, it, it, you, you gotta wait for it. But it, it, it will come there later, yeah. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, hi, Fox. Um, Alright, um, you also played with Cheaters yesterday? 
But you see, that's not uh, correct because when you accuse somebody of uh, cheating, you have to have a proof. So uh, it's not exactly, uh, you should say allegedly cheating, all right? Allegedly or something like that. You have to protect yourself against legal stuff because, uh, you know, it's calling somebody cheating is still, um, you know, still serious accusation. You kind of tarnish the reputation, etc. And unless you have absolute proof, you should not call them cheaters, which is why I refrain from calling them directly on cheating. But I call them suspicious characters because that's uh, that's a different story, right? Because I have my suspicions, I have a right to be suspicious, and um, that's what I do. All right, just just uh, uh, you have to make them confess, right? Like in the in the brave heart, right? Like uh, they torturing him at the end of the movie, right? And then, like uh, if you confess, then you get a quick death, right? Like quick quick chop off your head. And if you don't, then they're gonna torture you. And so the question is, do you confess? And, you know, when, when under such tortures, like, uh, are you gonna confess? Of course, anybody's gonna confess. You know, so are you gonna torture them, like, you know, feeding them burgers, uh, like, for 24 hours or seven for a year? That's a, that's actually sounds like a huge torture. Yeah, that's not, that will be like really bad. Um, I don't know. Naka accused of 25 uh, because he beat him round one. But not, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. So, um, yeah, okay, but uh, that game was actually, yeah, you know, it's, it's difficult to do something when the suspicious character that actually uses unfair assistance, he does it smartly. It's not like he's going to use the third line anymore. Third line, you know, third line play is like so old school now. Um, you know, the original cheater, cheaters, suspicious characters uh, that were caught, they were like really obvious about it. They would play first line. So that would become really obvious. Then they got smarter, right? They started to play second line, third line, you know, mixing up moves. And now they're actually a lot more smarter, you know? So it's like a game of cat and mouse. And uh, now they sometimes just throw in one move, which doesn't uh, lose anything immediately. And then they play the third line, you know, third line. And then they throw another move that doesn't lose anything. And then they play another third line, you know, sequence of moves. So they, they, it's, very, it's very difficult. Um, yeah, exactly. So, uh, calm, you you got it, man. That's, that's, you know, these guys are getting smarter. So, um, so there's a huge thing now going on because FIDE has not been doing much because they can't really do, do anything legally, right? They, they, I mean, they can do, but they are so restricted in legal terms, right? Only so much they can do. So it's up to the organizations, it's up to the uh, online platforms to create their own standards. standards. So this is why Jabava created this um, uh, group on Facebook, which I support fully. You know, like professionals against the um, unfair play, right? And um, so they, we, uh, what the world uh, is trying to do now, the, especially the top world, is they are uh, trying to come to a consensus on what will be the standard during the online play for the tournament, uh, for the series tournaments that feature the prizes, the money prizes, right? And right now there is the consensus that there should be cameras for everyone who is actually playing for money. There should be cameras. I mean, um, there are cheap cameras. You can say you can't really say you're completely broke. You cannot afford one, right? But with the cameras, it will be a lot harder for people to use unfair assistance because sometimes you don't have to be doing it yourself, right? It could be your friend watching the game from some other server, right? And he has access, and then he, you know, have direct communication. And it's so so easy. Or well, there is a group uh, group effort, right? Only cameras will be actually like able to stop this. So these are the most obvious ways, and um, that that's what they're doing it, right? Um, right. Ninety accuracy. It is tough, man. Uh, hi, Doki. Um, thank you for following. Uh, uh, right. Right. Um, yeah. And, and that was only in March, right? That was only in March before they started the doing titled uh, Tuesday every week, right? And um, yeah, so and on, in April, they already done what, three or four title Tuesdays? And we see, the way I see it, right? Every title Tuesday, there are more and more suspicious characters. More and more, not less, but more, right? Hence his email, because uh, he realizes that, uh, that uh, you know, this thing is not going anywhere. And you have to fight it. Fight it really hard. Yeah? You have to fight all this stuff. And you gotta make uh, actually hard uh, regulations. You have to 
do this or it's gonna just destroy the game there will be no online chess you know it will be a joke one or you're gonna have only the tournaments like magnus iron man invitational tournament where you have the absolute top players playing in a very limited number of spots and the rest of us that can basically just uh, watch and think right that's all we can do all right so let's see um the third game has not started yet we are still seeing this game and um this is a draw and queen d1 has been played so we're gonna see the third game between uh, Kurana and um, maxim so queen d1 and we see that uh, dink uh, messed up a little bit yeah he really messed up with that bishop on h3 because bishop on h3 is basically even though he's looking at the c8 square there is no way for white to um, get rid of this knight on e5 and uh, with this pawn on h5 giving this uh, knight incredible square right this bishop will have to be uh, staying on the guard duty like forever forever um, white really wants to exchange the queens but black is not gonna be so accommodating right he is not there is no way white is gonna just uh, trade the queens easily so um, let's see you're only 2k feeder um Anna fun what? what 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 happens what did I miss um Anna Rudolf was accused of cheating when she got her GM norm oh I don't I, I I don't know that story I have no idea um the actual fact is that you uh that is then or you can catch someone while cheating or you can prove it exactly exactly however there is such thing as the um you know um as being getting able to get away with something right doing it and getting away with something and of course uh, your peers who understand what you're doing but not able to prove it right it's like there's still this uh, uh untold this um sort of peer effect thing right i mean if peers realize that you are doing something wrong but it, nobody can catch you you know you're gonna be shunned right you're gonna be shunned you're not gonna be invited to the tournaments uh, you know the word will spread right so it's there's still this effect um uh, on, o over the board uh it's fortunate fortunately it's much less because you know you know there are chances uh that you get uh, really caught easily the the much 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 you're much more likely to get caught if you're doing something wrong um knock is messing this up wait 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 what happened i just guys spoke to you and he played this queen e1 move why didn't he play queen d5 and the idea of queen d4 then basically ah then he didn't want to exchange this queen right thank yeah so that's the reason why he played the queen e1 but um yeah but now I don't know. Is rookie four a thing? I think rookie four is a thing now, yeah? Trying to catch this knight off guard. So probably queen d1 back. But I think he missed rook d4 now. Right, that's kind of intermediate move, and then rook e4. Then you have to play this, and then you have this absolutely crazy computer line, right? Queen d4, and you see how the evaluation goes up because this bishop is going to be really looking at these pawns. Really calling this number, right? So king g2, yeah. Yeah, Ding is a very, very dangerous in these, to these sorts of positions. He really understands the structure. He really knows where your pieces should be. Like, look at, the, look at this rook on f4. It does a hell of a job, right? It protects the f2 square, takes away c4 square. It, it attacks f7 pawn, and it hits the g4 square, right? So black cannot just play knight g4 and exchange this bishop. So look at, the, look at this rook. Queen on b2, right? It's, it looks passive, but it... It takes huge control over this diagonal, right? It uh, protects the second rank. It protects a hell of a lot of squares as well. And Wild Black Knight on e5 is like really cool dude. Really cool dude. Yeah, but he is completely restricted, right? So um, look at this, right? Uh, how, how, are you guys, how are you guys doing? Hi, Machiavelli. Um, Naka was so safe. He was not safe. That's the point because he's structurally worse. Right, his pawns are on the light squares, the color of the white bishop. So any moment, there is always the danger that um, he cannot trade queens. Once he trades the queens, basically any endgame is really bad for Naka. 
right? Because of that simple bishop c8 coming and destroying those pawns, or rook going to d4, f4, rook d7, right? Because there is this plan with the rook going to the 7th after, uh, let's say, f4, right? That was a huge plan. But white needs to, to trade the queens first in order to do that. And now the, now the whole dance is about how can white trade the queens, right? Um, so you see Nako set this up uh, with the rook e4, knight g4 thing, right? That's what he wants to do. Rook e4, knight g4. Nako shaking... So, uh, no link. Well, it's on chess. Okay. Um, all right. The chess. Uh, the chess that come overall game accuracy is a joke. It does not tell much. That is true as well. I agree. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. However, however, it's a first step. You know, it's not the main overall writing factor. It's one among many. Okay. Uh, yeah, black does look paralyzed. So the. Accuracy, you start with the accuracy, right? When there is a high accuracy, it's your starting point from starting to do the research. Then, you know what they do. I mean, these guys are smart, right? There are databases of players on almost anybody. If you ever played in any tournament over the board, however, however long ago, you know, those games are available. It's very easy to put them into the computer and research them analysis. If you played a month ago at the level of 1800 or 20, 000, or 2100, right? And now suddenly a month later you're playing at the 27, 2800 level. What do you think? Do you think that's visible? I don't think so. Even if you're a Firuza, there is no way he grows up that uh, so fast. All right, so let's see. King h7. We see this line bishop c8 by Dink. Oh, he just... Um, all right, so bishop d7, bishop c8 first, right? He didn't see that. So that that was the second computer line. The idea is that uh, uh, there, there, there is the threat, right? Because now there is queen d1, and suddenly there is queen d5 check, and knight g4 coming. And of course, there is this trick. If you take on b7, for example, there is queen d5, and you cannot play king g1 because knight d3, right? And rook e1, rook h1. Right, so there, there's a lot of tactics. Hikaru is extremely tactically gifted and resourceful player. And, um, right, so what happened? Queen a4. Um, so what happened? Rook d4. Luke centralizes, of course. And now, um, oh, he missed knight c4. Ooh, knight c4. Look, what a move. Oh, queen d5 check, of course. Of course. So queen c3. Oh, and then, of course, black is just... Um, oh, you can just grab this pawn because that bishop is hanging. That's the whole point, guys. Right? That was the whole point. Now black is slightly worse again. Rook e4, of course. And queen b5 has to be played. Right? Look at this. This is this is extremely... This is extremely tough position to play. For... Uh, unless you are absolutely top GM and understand everything. This is extremely difficult to play for both colors. Um, you're not able to understand the plan behind the move, it could be an, uh, um, see, um, uh, when on to cheat was, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, okay, um, yeah, so there is a huge uh, controversial topic, right, but it has to be resolved one, one way or another, or there will be no future for online chess, as simple as that, right, there has to be some standard, they have to be a golden standard for the players, for the organizers, right? They has to be. I mean, we are in uncharted territory. We are basically still where one when at the stage when the internet. Remember, guys. I, I'm not sure some of you are that old, but if you remember when the internet was just coming in the in the late 80s, right? You know, we still that had those uh, telephone hookup uh, to the. Um, to the internet we had to disconnect the phone connect the uh, plug in the uh, cord telephone cord and it was a 56k connection was like oh my god that's huge so fast right right and building boards and etc you remember how internet was then right it was like a, a, a frontier right the browser wars right no standards nothing they they couldn't come up with anything they couldn't agree on anything so it's the same thing right now in chess Yes, so it's it's absolutely the same thing, and uh, you know sooner or later the push will come to shove, and uh, there will be standards, and there will be everything, but it's just gonna take time. Um, yeah, you're 12, you know those days pretty well. Okay, 
Ask your father. I'm pretty sure he can explain you really well. Okay, so queen d4. Very good. Yeah, see, see now white is completely centralized. And despite Hikaru's clever tactical tricks, he missed that knight c4 though, yeah? That was his chance. Now he is just worse because, uh, uh, yeah, all his pieces are paralyzed. He cannot capture on c8. And this bishop is uh, threatening to take on b7 some point. And um, if black plays f6, that's actually going to be serious. He, he did play f6. Now this is a very serious weakening because the seventh now is looking incredibly weak. So bishop h3 probably has to be played. We're also looking at f4. f4 looks very interesting as well. Um, but f4, yeah, rook c8, f takes e5, c5. That looks very complicated. I think bishop h3 will be probably played. And I think the game started here. So let's go back. Oh, we still Dutch Leningrad. Guys, Leningrad defense. Um, Leningrad defense, but... Uh, Fabiano plays this queen e2. I really like the way Landerman played against me. I think that's the best plan for white. Put the knight on f4. And then uh, knight on d4, right, at some point. And bishop, wait, and, 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 and wait for black to exchange the bishops. And then knight d4, and then hit those pawns. So um, queen e2, I think, isn't correct. Um, so black is playing the way I'm playing. Okay, so we are transferring to this position. This is my... This is the game against... Um, that I had against Landerman. Almost. Almost. But white spent a lot of time. Black is actually ahead. So knight d4, knight d4. A lot of dancing. Black is actually absolutely fine now. He is absolutely fine. In fact, I would say black is better. You know, the Dutch, uh, the Dutch landing grid is actually a very aggressive opening. Because strategically uh, the, and structurally, black is actually doing well. Uh, he's got the majority on the queen side. All his pieces are active. The f f5 pawn is actually not weak. And if white doesn't manage to somehow use this uh, pawn chain to his advantage or open the game, black will be better. And we can see the evaluation here. You see? You see it, right? White didn't do anything wrong. He just plays really passively, just shuffle pieces around, and black is already better. Black is already better. Right. So that's the, that's the Dutch Leningrad. That's why it's such a fighting opening. So we see f4. Ding going actually for the uh, very tactical line. Um... All right, um, on Atari, you recall chess program Colossus. All right, good. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's Dutch Leningrad. You have to remember, actually, you have to remember how to play accurately with white. Because if you don't, then it's very easy to get an inferior position. This is the reason why I love Dutch. Uh, and I probably must take a look at it again and try to refute that, uh, try not to refute, but at least find the antidote to Landerman line. Because I really hate that uh, position where I have to exchange my light squared bishop for only six, right? Allowing white, white to take it. I, I love to keep my bishops. And uh, yeah, so c5, um, you know, you gotta take on c5. I mean, there's not much to think about, right? Uh, pawn takes. Queen c6 is bad because of bishop d7, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. There is a pin. So well, let's let's try to calculate this line with the, without the computer. Obviously, you can take with the queen, queen, pawn, rook. Pawn takes on e5, but then um, after f5, rook goes somewhere. Rook takes c5. Looks very drawish to me. So probably pawn takes on c on c5, and then we're looking not at rook c8, but probably queen c6. Queen c6, and then if you take on e5, then um, f5 is bad because of bishop d7, right? So black probably takes on e5 with the rook. But if he takes on e5 with the rook, and you can just basically play king f3 because there is no f5. And uh, black will have to take on c8 sooner or later, and you just end up with the um, with the extra stuff, I think, right? Because rook e4, queen e4, queen c8, queen e7, check, and then you probably grab somewhere. So we see queen t5. Um, queen t5, uh, I haven't looked at that line. Uh, wait, queen t5, interesting move, right? We looked at the bc5, queen c6, f e a. Uh, all right, queen t5, interesting, um, interesting. See, Dinka came up with the with the very interesting move. Do you know Christmas tree variation of the Dutch? You don't have to play c6. Yes, I know you don't have to play c6, but uh, I love c6 line. The old nice c6 line, yes, uh, there is such a line, and uh, there is like a huge amount of analysis there. 
huge amount. There's also famous Melanie Klein, right? He plays queen e8 and he plays not knight c6, but I think he plays um, knight a6, right? And uh, or knight e4. There are a lot of lines in the Dutch. I mean, if you analyze any of those lines well, uh, you can basically play it. It's a, it's a great uh, fighting opening again. Highly recommended. So we are looking at some moves here. So we see rook c8, take, f5 has to be played, rook c4. And uh, one plus 1.2 is not such a large advantage actually. All right, so one plus 0.2, it's not actually such a huge advantage. So let's go back to this position. We see queen g7 was played. Black is doing fine. All right, so black is doing fine and uh, Maxim actually getting a good position for once out of the opening because, uh, you know, Fabius has an incredible uh, preparation always. He, simply his prep is incredible. I would say it's more one of the most fearsome preps uh, among the top players right now. If you guys remember in the candidates, he lost to Ding, right? That was such a huge prep on the Slav. Huge prep. He, he had extra hour on the clock. Ding King was in danger, but then uh, Fabi probably relaxed a little bit or he messed, mixed up his uh, move order. Then he just basically played quickly. That's the danger of actually playing really quickly, even though it's according to your prep, because um, you might think that this move is exactly what you looked at, but it might, might have been a different situation. So you gotta spend time thinking, okay? So you gotta spend time thinking. Um, so let's see what happened here. Uh, we see some moves, e6. Uh, e6 second line. Queen c6, not accurate according to the computer. Uh, taking on b4, probably he was afraid of rook c7 check though. And then queen d4, so let's take a quick look what happens here if white gives a check. Ooh, really brave move here. And then queen e2, he missed the queen e2, I see. Yeah, this was really difficult because if you... And you don't have a6 yet, right? So you have to play something like queen e3. This is very close to a draw. Alright, so this is a computer defense, of course. It's uh, not easy to see this. So take, take, check. Um, probably have to play this. And we are in this position, which is probably a draw. Yeah. Yeah, this looks... Um, yeah, this is definitely is a draw. Alright, so um, Hikaru managed to defend this position, yeah? Uh, almost 95% uh, that the black is okay. Um, faster time controls, that's why he was playing them. That's why he's playing all the title Tuesdays, right? Uh, not all of them, but some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Rook g4. Yeah, basically it's a draw. So Naka held. Very impressive defense, by the way. I think by the sixth time, US champion. Is he five or six times? I don't know. Yeah, because I'm only five. I think he's got more. Hmm. still playing it, yeah? Wow. Mm -hmm. So white king, white king is basically going here to b6, but black is gonna go on g5 at some point, yeah? Mm. Oh, he can do g5 immediately. Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, okay, you can't beat knock in this. He knows his rook and games, for sure. He knows his rook and games. Dink, you can you can stop. Are you gonna lose now? Yeah. 
You cannot beat Naka in a Rook endgame. He knows his stuff. By the way, um, yeah, exactly. Magnus dropping because he played Bullet before, the night before, right? Um, by the way, you know, for those people who really like Lil so much, you know, we gotta remember that she basically, you know, winning one match and then she lost the match before, right? It's all like in the process, right? Probably okay, she's better, but do you, do you know how many games um, database, um, how large of the data, game database she has to have at her disposal? To play, um, to play Stockfish, right? The neural network, right? Because each game the Stockfish plays, it's like the first time it ever plays. It doesn't have the knowledge of the games it played before against the Leela. While Leela, supposedly, has the knowledge of all those games, all those lines that she played against the Stockfish, right? Don't you think that's like a huge advantage? Having that knowledge of databases, of the games played before, sort of experience. It's like you, for example, playing a certain opponent, and you already know what his weaknesses are and strengths are. And you're going to focus and hammer on them, which is exactly what Lily is doing. And Stockfish is just basically a mannequin, right? It's, uh, basically, a mannequin is just a target. Um... Prepare that amazing London video that we can hardly wait for. I'm trying, guys, but there's this bloody tournament that happens every day. I wish it uh, ends already, you know? Because, you know, even though we have all these uh, cool names and uh, guys playing chess, you know, it's it's still basically just a regular tournament. You know? I feel like I have to cover it. So, um, so that's, that's the second round game, right? Let's go back to the third round game. Okay, so these guys are actually make a draw, yeah. Make a draw. Do you watch the state of chess address yesterday from Danny Ranch? It's addressed there. No, I didn't. I didn't watch it. Yeah, there was a link provided. I didn't watch it because you know, you know, I just read that letter and I felt that I had to post it on Facebook. So that's what I did to, you know. Um, Right, am I right that Dutch is not so good for Blitz Chess? No, you're not correct. Dutch is good at all levels, actually. Um, it is difficult. Okay, you are correct in the sense that it is difficult to play if you're facing some line that's been prepared. Um, because, again, it's like Grunfeld, right? White has so many systems at his disposal, and you have to be ready for each one of them because they're all pretty, pretty badass, right? Dangerous. Um. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, uh, all right. What I what I'm saying is that I think in Lilo there is this um, programming stuff, right? That ba makes you actually take notice of your opponent, uh, uh, like moves, like mistakes that she that your opponent usually does, right? There is this thing, like you know, I think it should be. If it is not there, it should be there at least, right? Like, it should note uh, the opponent's characteristic uh, strengths and weaknesses. And whenever it sees any weaknesses, it should hammer down on them, right? And Stockfish doesn't do that. I mean, it doesn't realize, you know... Again, it's a smart opponent versus just uh, strong, but uh, basically, you know, stationary opponent, right? It's the same thing. Oh, I'm sure. I'm actually. Uh, they have like um, in the, in the letter they stated they have nine person team who is dedicated to making sure the unfair usage is limited. I'm 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 I know, I know they're doing a hell of a lot more work actually than Fida does. So that's why I'm you know I'm I'm very happy that they do that. But it's still such a long way to go, right? And. Um, before uh, they can actually do any serious online world championships like Fisher Random, for example, or other tournaments where they can proclaim European Championship. You know, they should actually, you know, guarantee that at least 95% of unfair usage will not be allowed, right? Uh, like over the board, um, you know, I mean, sure, there is a huge team, but there's still a lot of work to be done. 
Yeah, and, and, they, sh and they, sh sh they will be a standard. Once the standard will be set in stone, so to speak, you know, it will be, it will be much easier to, uh, to, you know, focus on chess, actually, right? Um, right, and about Leela, you know, again, I looked at the way, um, you know, its strength it relies on the number of games it plays, right? And it stores in its memory. So basically, in order to play really well, at that level that it beats Stockfish, right, at its highest level, I, can, I'm, I don't know how many games it has to be played to be at that level. For example, they were like, uh, they released some sets of the games, right? Like higher games gives higher elo, but, you know, um, I looked at it and, and I realized, you know, in order to be that strong, it probably has to be like terabyte of information, right? I simply don't have so much uh, space on my hard drive. My hard drive is basically 500 uh, gig, right? It, it's old computer, okay? It, I, I cannot store all this information just for Leela, right? So I'm pretty sure the, uh, the top GMs, though, the, the, they can afford it, right? They can afford the best computers, the hardest, uh, uh, the, uh, the fastest, the most memory, RAM and everything, right? Hard drive computers, and I'm sure they do that. I'm sure they, they keep Leela with the best uh, number of uh, databases. Um, is it a good strategy to play close position against computers? Um, it, it, it slows down their, their <laughs> winning ability, that's what I'm saying. Because once you open the position against computer, you're gonna lose. It's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. When you play slower, uh, you know, close positions, you you kind of delay the inevitable, right? Um, yes, I understand that it's open source and you, in, and and it's uh, learns from itself. But what I'm saying is about the quality, right? Uh, why would I want to have Lila that is only like 2300 Elo, right? And, and it takes like a huge chunk of my hard drive, right? When when I can I can basically have this free stock fish eight which can beat any Lila basically, uh, right uh, b below a certain threshold and it takes way less space on the hard drive right. Again, it's it's about being practical and it's also about being um, you know um, yeah mostly practical. So uh, thank you for subscribing, uh, Chess Fool. Um, yeah, I understand Lila is open source. I, I, I'm absolutely happy you guys, uh, she exists. I'm happy about it, you know, because it's a new approach to chess. I absolutely love it. I don't, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying like, you know, um, again, okay, to be absolutely honest, I kind of still old, old school, which is the reason I like uh, Stockfish more, but I find it more practical because, uh, you know, when I read about different GMs, they saying uh, I use Lila, you know, I use Lila. So I, I, I try to figure out, and then, um, again, Lila's strength is based on the number of database games it has, and uh, I think in open source they have some some number of database games, and uh, probably they have probably better better sources for the top GMs, but uh, so far the Lila's that I saw, that they were evaluated as playing at around 2500 level max, maybe, so that's not it. Um, right. Right, so that, that's just my opinion, I can be wrong, uh, but again, just to have that uh, very strong Lila on my computer to help me analyze stuff, for example, lines, I need to devote like a huge chunk of memory of, from my hard drive, I'm not ready to do that. So, alright, <clears throat> so let's see, this is gonna be a huge uh, end game, right? The third game hasn't started yet, so we see the queen end game, and Fabi actually managed to trick... How did he, how did Black lose this, uh, how did he, why did he, what happened here? My god, uh, what the hell happened? Alright, this, how did he, why did you allow White to get this D, D file? Alright, so he already did something wrong here. So this is equal, and uh, Black should not play B5, yeah, okay, B5 was way too cocky, right? Because Bishop C6 relies on the spawn for protection. So you, you got to be patient, you got to play this move like double the rooks on the D file, king h7, get king to safety, right? Because obviously white is going to play something like rook d1, knight d2, try to exchange stuff. And then uh, probably black should just uh, prepare for b6, a5, right? King h7 first, but b5 is like really cocky. 
Really cocky. You don't play like this against Fabi. I'm sorry you don't. But you don't. Alright, so if you want to do this, you have to trade and play queen e7. You have to start protecting your pawn, because if you pr protect it like this, then you get the, the you get the file. White gets the file, and with the open king like that and the Dutch defense, the pawn is on the 5, not on f7, right? White can, white can just get to the 7th rank. And uh, if uh, black plays something like this, right, then, uh, I don't know, rook cd1. And if rook e7 to protect the 7th, right? You need to protect the 7th. Now you have this h4 coming. And then you have queen c3 coming, right? Oh, you have rook g6. Boom. Kaboom, baby, right? So, you know, when you're playing Dutch, you have to be really careful about all the things that you do. Because um, now you just pawn, pawn down. And of course, you know, it's a huge defensive resource. You're only pawn down in the queen endgame. Probably a draw, right? Because 1.2 is, uh, is not enough to win. Look at the game in Dutch defense if you didn't. Um, um, he didn't take enough two. What? 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 What of two? Uh, Alright, this looks already complicated to... Yeah, this is really bad to defend in, in, a, in, a, in a fast game. You really need um, classical chess time control to defend this. Because to defend it at, uh, what, five minutes? I don't think, uh, is this clock correct? They have nine and eleven minutes. Um, oh, you mean Lilo is a stockfish? Alright, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Yeah, for some reason this uh, IGM got a victory sign sometimes doesn't work. And sometimes it does. I'm, I'm not sure why, 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 it, why it's like this. No idea. But it should be like this, yeah. Some people it works, for some it doesn't. I, I don't know. Um, some 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 crazy stuff. So it's we, we, this is gonna be a huge and long game. It's a huge and long game, and uh, Maxim had a great position out of the opening, right? He had actually an advantage with Black, and then he misplayed it. Misplaying it, man. So let's go back to this game. Okay, we're gonna see another anti-Berlin. So we see another anti-Berlin, we'll probably see another one of those uh, close position games. These guys love uh, close positional games, you know. I have no idea why, but some people really do love these close positional games. They really like to, like to maneuver stuff around, you know, build all that uh, tension up and then... <clears throat> and then, it in, <clears throat> then it all kinds of app ends up uh, in a massive exchanges in the draw, right? So that's kind of silly, but... You know, that's what usually happens. What do you think about the Berlin? Um, yeah, plus one doesn't mean uh, anything below two in the end game if uh, it, it does not win. Um, bet a6 slav also very closed. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, that's that's a good point, man. That's a good point, just uh, a five card. That's, that's a good point. Um, I mean, when I was a top player, I loved those close positions as well. Why? Because um, it allows you to actually not get caught in some crazy opening preparation if you're playing something open, right? Like Sicilian neither for something. So that's uh, basically I played. I did, the reason I started playing it is just because to avoid all the theory, memorizing all those lines, and getting caught up in some surprise uh, preparation with the mega novelty. So that's the reason why I played. Um, and again it's very safe right a lot of the top gms they just basically play really solid safe chess and uh, but uh, earlier i was talking more about the viewership right we love to have fun we'll have, we'll have to see those fighting games we'll have to see that spirit you know we'll have to see some um, a lot of blunders and stuff uh, depends right first of all we're looking for the quality game um so that's what we're looking for bishop b4 unusual yeah. In the king, King's Gambit, only b2 holds for whites. Um, Berlin is actually... Yeah, it's one of those uh, Kramnik inventions that... Uh, <laughs> you know, Kramnik should be called the destroyer of the opening theory. <laughs> or destroyer of chess, because, uh, you know, remember how he destroyed Gary's King's Indian by finding that bayonet attack, right? And then he came up with this Berlin, also also against Gary, like his... Uh, I think that's his legacy. 
Kramnik's legacy, the world champion, is uh, these openings. Berlin and uh, Bayonet and King's Indian, right? And now, of course, okay, and Italian, resurrecting Italian game. Those uh, three absolutely <laughs> god-awful openings, uh, but they have the right to exist, right? And um, you gotta know, you gotta know that stuff, but... Uh, yeah, basically he introduced these three openings that are must-have in every top player repertoire, but they're so so bad. You know, when, when, when I'm pretty sure whenever like top player looks at these openings, he he kind of cringes mentally. You know, he has to prepare himself mentally. You know, before he can start studying these, right? Um, well, okay, uh, I don't know. You should ask Gary about what happened that match. You know. I'm pretty sure he was uh, trying to fulfill his prophecy that uh, his student is going to be world champion one day. So, I mean, for, for a teacher, there is nothing greater than that, right? Than wishing his student to succeed. Wishing his student succeed, not to succeed. I apologize for my bloody grammar mistakes. All right, so um, Queen's Endgame. Still going to go. This is going to go forever, guys. This is going to go forever. And... Um, Maxim needs the time, he needs to think in a critical position, because White is going to go for this King g5, h6, probably somewhere, but then a lot of checks. Actually, White misplayed, yeah, he's only plus one now. I mean, point one. it's not that much. So, um, alright, so this bishop, bishop before is actually interesting, yeah. So, actually, some games have been played here, I didn't know that. So, knight fd2, and b5, oh, this looks actually very, very human. I like b5, to be honest. Um, but it's not on the top, right? F6 is absolutely standard. F6, bishop c5, put the knight on e6. But b5 is like really fighting move by Ding. He is... He is... He, 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 you know, Ding got a unique style, right? He's got this very unique style, actually. You can't really actually um, put him into any specific chess school and you cannot really call him universal player. Yeah, because uh, one moment he is ready to play close position, then he goes, and then boom, he goes b5, and he is ready to go street fighting, right? So, um, and uh, like in the previous game, right, he was basically torturing uh, Hikaru positionally, you know, trying to improve his uh, pieces all the time, looking for those tactics. Yeah, this is inc Ding is an incredible player, to be honest. Yeah, he works really hard in chess too. But, uh, yeah, look at the knight on a3. The evaluation is so high, the computer evaluation is so high, because the computer values the piece activity a lot, and the knight on a3 is not really that great. Um, right. Um, oh, I missed some chat. Uh, Kramnik was Kaspar's student. Yeah, for a long, very long time. Very long time, actually. He was his student, and he actually he actually seconded uh, Gary in his match against Anand, right? You guys know that, right? Of course. And that gave Kramnik a lot of inside information into Gary Kasparov's World Championship level preparation. Um, well, about Shirov and Kasparov, just Google it. I mean, uh, it's 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 one of those Gary stories. <laughs> we don't want to repeat it. Um, Knight of three probably holds. Wow. Yeah, that that is actually memen, memens, but that that's actually like really crazy. Yeah, th that's a more of a cult thing, right? I think that's more of a cult thing. Um, although, you know, I heard that uh, such horror stories about the um, Ara Arabic culture, right? Because um, only the top uh, son gets the rights for anything, right? And because of the lifespans, uh, you know, it's a pretty good life there. You know, the sons, they get no... In order to fight for power, they sometimes resort to absolutely horrible things, right? Like in-family fighting. That's huge. Um, yeah. Because only the top... Uh, and of course, they fight for the being the top, the crown uh, prince or so, I believe. Right? I mean, a while ago, quite a few years ago, you know, there was this... Um, yeah, okay, so there, there's like a whole culture there, there's like a whole mentality there. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. 
All right, so uh, queen h4, the computer really doesn't like, I think, queen h4. Yeah, he likes queen e7. I don't see much of a difference. The idea is that black bishop on a6 is not really that great either. And black cannot really capture this pawn on a4 because knight gets the c4 square. So for now, black is trying to poke white knight out of d2. Because if he can manage to get this knight from d2 away from the c4 square, he can think about playing b4 here. It only take around 50 megabyte less. Um, really? Tensor Pasialatai. Just make sure you take a mature net, not a new net. Alright, mature nets. Alright, so give me, give me, if you know so much about Lilo, then give me the, the numbers, man. We like concrete stuff, right? So give me the numbers. If I want the 2800, okay, I don't want 2800 Lilo because my stock fish is 3000 Elo, right? So I want, I want 3000 Elo Lila. How many uh, self games she has to play? What is the database size is that? Um, yeah, what is the, uh, what is the, um, uh, size of the file of uh, the you know bunch of files right uh, there is a bunch of files right uh, has to be in order for me to have this 3000 lila elo um, it's about 7 meg you sure 7 meg uh, hmm oh, that was way more Yeah, that's how we that's how we roll, guys. We are from Brooklyn. We don't take bullshit for an answer. We are from Brooklyn, baby. Um, uh huh. Net five nine one two one five. If you would be so kind, then uh, you know, uh, add a comment uh, to to my YouTube channel, maybe because I don't think you can uh, link here directly. But if you can uh, drop the link to this uh, version of Lila that you mentioned, 591215, where we can download this, you know, do that because we'll be we'll be happy to test it sometime, right, guys? I think you'll all like uh, to have a Lila 3000 uh, or the current Lila, right, at your fingertips, right? Have that access. Have the best program in the world right now the world champion to analyze for you all the intricacies of your favorite london system or the king's gambit right um yeah yeah he he said that but okay that was a long time ago and after that he started actually laughing he started to making all those crack jokes like you know like he was saying like when he hears about when he was named kamsky he is laughing right i, I mean he, the guy was a crackpot I mean, I don't know what he was smoking, but uh, he was so full of himself. Uh, it was like uh, that, 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 that his character was legendary. That's why he was disliked by a lot of his colleagues. You know, he was just way too full of himself. On the other hand, he's a great champion, okay? So, all right. Um, again, I can't say great champion. He's one of the greatest, right? To be honest, he, is, he, he, he was the greatest. He was a genius. Genius. I won't call him genius, though. I would say that um, Bobby was a genius, sure. But uh, Kasparov, no. Uh, he was the greatest because he was the strongest and the practical, and he had huge analysis. He was far ahead of his peers in all the home preparation. Um, yeah, so that's it. But not genius, no. Okay. Um, Yeah, Gary was full of his, oh, full of himself. I mean, it's well known. I mean, among the older GMs, it was highly, high, oh, high, very high opinion of himself, which of course was uh, a lot of justified things. But uh, you know, because obviously he is, uh, and a lot of his victories were based on all that home prep. A lot of his victories, although he had some absolutely fantastic uh, practical games, right? But again, it's a difference between the human qualities and the being a chess player. Those we have to distinguish, right? We have to distinguish. All right, so what happened here? Okay, ooh, 
my god, isn't like white winning here? This like looks really bad for black. Yeah, this looks really bad. Um, yeah, this looks bad. Uh, so, see, I told you it's extremely difficult to hold a game like this with black. When you have like m seconds on the clock. Even like minutes, right? This is impossible. This is what happens, right? This is what happens. Uh, this is what happened in the first game. And this is the same thing is happening here in the third game. You know, stuff like this you cannot defend on such short time control. So, um, you know, 5B, good job on uh, grinding out this win. Uh, Maxim, poor dude, man. You know, you must not uh, get, to, get to such uh, positions if you want to survive. But you're gonna lose this game, that means uh, plus 2 for Fabio, so he wins the match. Okay. So we're gonna go back to our favorite uh, samurai versus uh, uh, Chinese kung fu. Yeah, samurai versus kung fu. So we have this uh, topic here. We have huge match. I feel that this uh, trade on b5 actually favors black heavily, right? Because yeah, this trade definitely helps uh, black. Um, what about Sultan Khan? Was he was a genius? I have no idea. I, I was, I'm not his contemporary. I can't speak about him. Uh, based on the article, I, I recently read some great, absolutely fantastic article about him. I would say that he was a natural uh, genius. On the order of Capablanca, right? He actually beat Capablanca, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, right? So he was a huge talent, of course. And of course, uh, can, you believe, can you imagine? You gotta be a slave, right? <laughs> My God, poor, poor guys. Now that's 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 uh, really tragic, really tragic. Uh, and when we face a stupid answer, we get killed. We need a way to understand position, how to get an advantage from them. Memorializing doesn't work. Very good, Mamens, you're correct. How many world champions after 1950 would you consider genius beside Bobby? Well, okay, Capablanca was a genius, right? Capablanca was a genius. For sure. Natural, all natural talents, um, they are geniuses, but you know, natural talent is not enough, right? You have to have this unique something that you bring with you. Bobby was that. Capablanca was that. Um, Tal was that, obviously. Tal, for sure. Uh, Smyslov, uh, close, but probably probably no cigar. Um, Batvenik, no. Um, a lot of work. And um, who else? Petrosian, very unique player, very unique, very, very close to being genius, especially he was my favorite um, uh, idol when I was growing up. Very close, almost, almost there, but probably not on the same level as Bobby or Kappa. Um, probably, yeah. Um, pity though. Well, Anand, we gotta, we gotta admit it, guys, Anand is a genius, right? Yeah, he, he, the island is a genius, all right. As much as the, it pains me to say that I have to admit he is a genius. And uh, Kramnik, hard worker for sure, practical player, genius, probably not. And uh, Karpov, no. Um, yeah. Who is the most difficult opponent you ever faced? Um, uh, <laughs> no, but because I have some history with Anand. Okay, I have some history. I was his. Um, I was playing him when the, when he was at his best, right? So have some history there, but it's more personal stuff. It's nothing to do with chess. Um, well, it, it does actually have to do with chess, but it's uh, more personal, right? Yeah, but uh, chess talent wise, yeah, he was a genius. Okay, all right, you got it. Yeah, but how about the guys who were never champions? Anybody? Ivanchuk? Hello? Yeah, raise your hand. Genius, non-world champion. Ivanchuk? Yes. Bronstein? Yes. Karis? Sure. Grishuk? No, <laughs> no. Grishuk? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, Chucky, for sure. Uh, Nimzo? My system, yeah? You know, Nimzo is like, uh, you know, whenever I hear Nimzo and then, you know, a guy actually had balls to name a book, my system, right? 
My God, he's like he, that. That guy definitely had some uh, some ego stuff, right? Um, ego, Morozevich, very close, very close, very close, almost, 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 almost. Uh, who else? Who else? Pillsbury, for sure. Guys, remember Pillsbury, right? Uh, Korchnoi, hard worker, hard worker, very hard worker, very, very hard worker. But, um, you know, in order to be a genius, you need to have that uh, something really extra. So he doesn't qualify. Lasker, no, definitely. My favorite idol player, but no, he is not a genius. He is a very, he's a psychologist. If you mean he's a genius in psychology, in chess psychology, then yes, I agree. He is a genius in the chess psychology. He introduced psychology into chess first, and he was a genius for that. But a genius chess player, no. Um, okay, Nezhmedinov, huge talent. But if you don't develop your talent, if you don't reach the top five in the world, you can't be called genius, right? I mean, you, you got to be at least uh, somewhere there. I mean, otherwise, anybody can be a genius in his own uh, block, right? I'd say, I'm a, I'm a genius of the East 19th Street in Brooklyn, yes? I mean, and who knows? There's no way to verify. All right. Uh, Ryshevsky. Okay, Ryshevsky. Actually, yeah. Actually, Ryshevsky, I might actually agree. Morphe, of course, of course. Okay, Morphe is uh, for sure. Morphe, of course. Um, yeah, I apologize. We kind of went from the commentating to to this um, massive discussion about the chess geniuses, right? All right. But guys, why we are being very unfair to women? Why are we unfair to women? Why only male geniuses? Come on, guys. Give me your best shot at the women genius players. Uh, Zucker Tort, very strong. Uh, Judith, you call her genius. Uh, there's only one woman, Judith the Queen. But is she enough to be called a genius? Can you really compare her to Ivanchuk, for example? Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think it's more hard worker. You you would say so, yeah. I mean, okay. That when you when you come to something like that, when you have really clearly dominating player, it's really difficult not to call such a dominating player in his generation, right? A genius. It's very difficult. But um, you know, trying to be objective is uh, always difficult. But I think in this case, probably very close. But probably, in my opinion. To call somebody genius, you know, really needs that extra something. You can be really dominating, sure. The best, absolutely, like Gary, right? Dominating, the best. But genius, that spark, man. I don't know. I don't know. She did. I I'm not uh, diminishing her uh, influence, right? Or her greatness. She is the greatest uh, uh, women uh, player champion that ever was. Among those, right? Maya, okay, um, but all right. Anybody? Let's not no, let's not just talk about the champions. What about non-champions? You guys know any women players? No champions, geniuses. Um, no, I think he would actually have done worse if he didn't defect. I think he would have done worse, so it was the correct decision for him. Um, as it was also in a way for me that we moved from Russia to America, right? Because uh, when I moved, I was 14, and as 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 it was proven, you know, one year I got from 2,300 LO talented youngster to the next year winner of Tilburg tournament uh, with a 2,650 LO and number five position in the world. I think that's kind of that's kind of. Um, makes it makes it uh, redundant right um what about daniel dubov boleslavsky i'm talking about women guys let's let's switch to women for example except judith right and except who you find right hard workers both maybe maybe okay maybe geniuses maybe geniuses um but mostly hard workers 
Anybody that like Tal? Do you guys know anybody who is like Tal? Andrea Bodes. Oh my god. Go marry her already, man. But don't bring her <laughs> don't bring her to the genius level, please. Um Alright. So, um Maya maybe, yeah? Uh yeah, okay, we got it, man. Maya Chiburdanidze, yeah? Uh, there were some actually older players, like in the 50s, I think, in the 60s. Yeah, they were re relatively unknown. Relatively unknown. And, um, you know what I think personally? You know? And not just because recently that I played her daughter, but I think Pia, Kremling. I think she has a huge talent. Always a huge talent. And um, probably not, can't call her genius, but definitely she was uh, one of the top players, right? And um, Ragozin is massively under underrated attacker. Like Tal only staying, no women. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen many women who play such an aggressive uh, sacri sacrificial style, style, yeah? Yes, there is actually one that comes to mind. If you guys know who Gunina is, right? So Gunina is actually playing like that. Uh, come on. Um, so we already got like two candidates, yeah? So we can't really call Gunina a genius, but she is definitely a huge attacking player, sacrificial player, right? So there you have it. Um, Nova, who is Nona? Nona Gapridanshvili? Yeah, so Maya Chiburdanidze and Nona Gapridanshvili are very close, yeah, very close. So among the women players. So okay. So we gotta we gotta know our women players, right? Who made our chess life uh, you know special. Alright. So let's go back to the game and we see that uh, white wins here. Ooh! Dink versus Nakamura is a draw. Alright, but we see in this one, right? So we see the game number four. And game three is here. Game number four started, right? All right. Uh, where are we, by the way? Why are we here? Oh, so they end a long time ago, yeah? Wait, are they playing? They're still playing. What, what am I doing? Wait, 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 wait. So Nakamura, this is three. And Fabiano is done, so he's playing this game. So let's, let's quickly go over what's going on here. So we see E3. Nice effort by Maxim to take Fabi away from the book, right? So we end up being uh, in this... Uh, this is reversed Sicilian with uh, bishop b5, knight c6, if you know your lines, right? This is reversed. Basically white has a tempo up. And I think black usually plays d6, queen c7 there. d4 is more aggressive setup. And now, of course, he should play d5 and block the bishop on c7. That is, goes without... See? He should have played d5. Now black plays d5, so he's fine, and um, small advantage to white due to the nice bishop pair. Uh, however, yeah, that, that square on c4 is kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of hole, yeah. Kind of a hole, but not a hole, right? So, um, thank you for following. Um, yeah, Judith, of course, yeah. So, okay, all right, Judith is a genius. All right, let's call her genius. Uh, we admit it, you know. All right, then. you got it, guys. MOL is out. They don't have as big egos. They don't hate losing as much. The more you hate losing, the stronger you get. Uh, that's uh, there is a lot of caveat uh, behind the statement. Um, it, it is complicated, right? It's again, it's a huge discussion between um, men and women. We all know Nigel's short position on that, right? So uh, he, what he says can be controversial, but it also contains some deal of uh, uh, truth. Not entire, I don't entirely agree with him on his position, but uh, some of the points he makes, I think, are actually like, you know, there are some biological effects, of course, right? I mean, men are inherently stronger physically, so I would say endurance is um, also a huge factor for men. 
There are exceptional women, of course, who if they're bodybuilding, right, doing a lot of physical exercises. But um, at what point, right, your control of the hormone uh, level and doing all that work on your body, right, at what point it becomes like a blending of the genders, uh, of the, um, of the um, genders, right? Gender, right? Because the, you, it's at some point, like when women start to look like men, uh, what happens, right? Um, right. Match is over, this game doesn't count, but they still play it, right? As you said, you hate losing. Um, you hate losing, so you gotta play it. So Fabi is still playing it because... Um, you know why they're still playing it? I'll tell you why. Because they're both candidates, because uh, Maxim is leading in the candidates tournaments. And if Fabi beats him with a pretty big score, that's, that's a kind of psychological uh, effect, guys, right? So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Nothing is uh, just as... Nothing is what it seems, most of the time. Right, there's always calculation ahead in the future. Like I beat this guy, really kick his ass, and then that's gonna be definite. That's gonna definitely have some effect on the classical game in the future. They still have to play each other second game, right? And uh, that will definitely influence the opening choice. That will def definitely influence the choice of the um, middle games, the strategy. So it's all connected. Um, well, there's always exceptions. Uh, what's the role of psychology in chess? It is incredibly huge. Psychology in chess is huge, man. Uh, I think there are people who have actually made uh, their uh, degrees, like in PhD or something, doing a lot of work on psychology in chess. I'm pretty sure. Um, and, and still more to, to go. Chess is like a huge field uh, for psychologists. Huge field. Um, I'm surprised there are not actually a lot more articles on it than uh, they exist. Yeah, very surprised. Probably is... is have you ever seen um, a professional psychologist who plays chess? Not many, yeah? Uh, so what happened? Bishop e3, bishop e5, draw. And why is it the draw? Because white exchange is the bishop, so it's the draw. Alright. So they probably started playing game 4. Let's go back to game 4 now. And after rook d1, a6, what is going on? Yeah, so basically, if black takes except the sack, this bishop becomes a monster, coupled with the d5 weak link. Yeah, you don't really want to accept this exchange sack. In fact, the first time I saw this positional exchange sacrifice was used by Elihine, I think, when I was a kid, at least uh, way before Petrosian, right? Elihine did something like this against Capablanca in their match. I think it was some Queen's Gambit, some very famous game that Elihine sacrificed in exchange like that and he won the game. Um, Krogius? Okay, but uh, Krogius is a very special case. Krogius is extremely special case. Uh, <laughs> I don't think... Uh, well, first of all, I'm not qualified to talk about this person. I have seen him maybe only a couple times in my life, but um, I'm talking about modern stuff, right? Rubin Fine. Yes, now that is the um, multi-talented uh, person, right? But wait, who was the mathematician? Also a famous American uh, grandmaster. Um, I always mix, mix up these two. Uh, one was psychologist, another was the mathematician. Not Max Uwe. I, I'm, I'm saying... Um, no, but there was American dude, right? American dude. He was uh, doing the... He, he, he was actually helping a lot during the World War II in the, um, you know, calculating stuff. There was this... Uh, I think there was this huge article on the Russian Chess Pro, if you can read Russian. If you go to the Chess Pro uh, uh, Russian website, it used to be really popular, but uh, I haven't heard about it in a long time. They actually have uh, nice historical articles on um, some grandmasters. And I think they did uh, one on... Uh, I'm not sure. But it was like a, a secret life of this GM and he was a mathematician. Um, no, no, no. I think It might have been fine though, yeah? Might have been. I'm not sure. Again, I'll have to check. Um, so, you guys know your history, chess history more than me, so you, you should know. Um, 
Danker, of course, was a grand, grand, grand man. I, I, I like Grand Danker. I was so lucky to actually meet him. You, you could feel, you know, when you have these people of the uh, of that generation, you can feel their class, right? You can feel their the the whole attitude, the way they speak to you. Like it's so different than what the modern modern, modern people do. It's like I'm so lucky that I met that people from that era, and uh, you know, comparing them to people of this era, this like different different upbringing different people um um darren brown i have no idea who darren brown is i'm sorry um thank was uh, fantastic uh ben larson did you play him no i didn't play um do you think 2800 can be achieved very soon or do you think that humans have a long way before they get higher what do you mean 2800 2800 magnus is 28 um Something he was very close to achieving 2900, right? Very close. Uh, if you ask him about 3000 LO, now that's a different story. 3000 LO, because you have to realize in order to gain rating, you have to have the base of peers who you can beat to get those points from. And um, for example, to reach 2900, you have to have sufficient number of 2800 uh, rated people who you can beat. Which is extremely difficult, of course, because of all the home prep, which results in a draw. So basically, each time you make a draw, it actually sets you back, right? So you're not allowed to draw. You have to beat your position, and which is why it is so extremely difficult to get to 2900, even for Magnus. Um, what do you think to pile of Kramnik toilet gate affair with cheating? Suspicion. Suspicious characters, right? Um... Yeah, I mean, the, the <laughs> what do I think about that match? Um, oh, we see another line. We, we have this another line. So uh, basically, Hikaru is continuing to try uh, Ding um, in this line. Not a good not a good idea, man. I, I lost to Ding in the structure. And then I realized Ding played absolutely brilliantly. This is his type of structure. This is where he excels. I don't recommend to play this against Ding. You actually were lucky to survive last time. Let's see what happens this time. And um, what happens here, white actually uh, trades the rooks because he gets the bishop to a3. He has to play b5, of course, and get that, get that bishop to a3. And white is better here. And about the Kramnik versus Tapalov, I'm not, I wasn't present there. So I'm not going to do some hearsay stuff. I have no idea. However, the match made chess very famous for a while. Even though it wasn't really such a great publicity, but still. It's an episode in history, which people will remember forever. I mean, how many people remember the match between Anand and Kramnik, right? I think it was in Bonn. Not many. Be why? Because it was just a match, an ordinary match. Also, Gelfand versus Anand. Nothing spectacular happened, right? Um, I mean, but uh, Kramnik Tapalov, everybody remembers this toilet affair. Um, 2300 uh, players are talented amateurs. Okay. You know, I'll be honest with you. I would say that a true professional chess player or any professional that reaches a certain level in any field, not just chess. Basically, when you once you reach that level, you realize that there is so much more that you can learn, right? That you're not truly a professional because there is just so much stuff more. So um, the way I see it, we're all basically amateurs. We are trying to find all these uh, moves, ideas, and um, that is why I absolutely love that uh, Japanese uh, um, cartoon. Um, manga. It called. It was called uh, Hi Go Hikaru. Hikaru no Go. Hikaru no Go. Right. It was about the Go game, but you know the concept is similar. Um, what I was trying to say, actually. About concept, trying to reach the mastery. Ah, trying to reach the mastery. Right. To make the divine move. That's that. That, that was the whole um, notion in uh, in that manga. They was looking for this divine move. Right. And boom, slam it on the board with that. You know, they have this technique where you, they put this middle finger and put that thing on that, right? Uh, the piece. 
and you slam it on the board and it's considered to be like, you know, a style, a, a correct way to play. That's how they actually distinguish if you're an advanced player or not. Because if you're an amateur level, you just pick it normally, right, and you put it. But if you're like advanced level, you slam it like a true professional, like with a flourish and, bl and slam it on the board. Um, yeah, I was over 2700. Um, aren't you only professional if you make a living? Well, you, 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 can, you can call yourself a professional, sure. I mean, you can. I mean, why not? People do that all the time, right? But you know what I like uh, about this phrase? If you guys seen this uh, fantastic movie with Denzel, Denzel Washington, Washington, right? The Man on Fire. Have you guys seen that movie? Have you guys seen that movie? Uh, yeah, that's my wife talking. I was talking to my wife. Uh, my, great, my greatest supporter in this world. So if you guys remember that movie, Man on Fire, remember how he he he, he starts his uh, you know revenge, and um, and and everybody he's uh, he's asking uh, you know questions and then killing. Um, they say like I'm a professional, you know, I do this nice and clean or something like that. And w w once he hears this like three times, he says like I keep hearing that, you know, I keep hearing you guys calling yourself professionals, you know, and. Uh, how, do, how does that work, right? Right. Very strong GM players without titles. Probably. Probably. But it's also a myth, right? Sometimes you... Do you really want to debunk the myth if it, um, if it kind of works out for you well? Ooh, actually... Maxim is now applying pressure on Fabi in this game, yeah? Because Fabi is uh, really passive here. Uh, but, uh, wait, 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 what, what happened here? Bishop b5. Yeah, b see, he should have played h5 and fixed this knight on a 4 and also fixed the squares, the pawns on the dark squares because you have potential bishop there, right? h5 had to be played. That way you fix your knight on a 4, which is perfectly placed knight because it has so many important squares. So bishop b5 was a sort of restricting move, but also a little bit inaccurate. And now bishop d7 and black just can exchange one pair of bishops which makes his life way way easier and then king rolls to g6 queen d7 you know and lots of other things makes life easier for black for sure but he played king g7 first and now i don't know why this you know again bishop d7 you have to play because this bishop is doing absolutely nothing here right you have to trade off this light squared bishop eliminate that uh, bishop pair advantage from your opponent you gotta do it man you gotta do it okay so what do we see here we see here you know standard white two holes three right bishop is considered to be bad because he is locked down by this pawn chain but in fact he is uh, controlling a lot more than that he is controlling center he is allowing for that e4 so white is basically going for e4, knight, probably knight b6 rather than c5. Because if knight gets to c4, he'll be protecting pawns, he'll be doing a lot of uh, uh, stuff in the center. And if white can get this pawn to e5 and knight to c4, he'll get this absolutely nice square on d6, right? So that's what we are talking about here. And uh, what happened here, we have bishop b4, bishop e6, a5, and... Uh, Ooh, and uh, ooh, I don't know, this is starting to look pretty scary for black, yeah? But maybe he is okay, yeah? Because check, and knight c3, king on g6, kind of funky. f4, my man, my god, you know? You know, now that Maxim is, um, you know, I think he he was too tense, yeah? Now he knows uh, that, uh, you know, he is not uh, losing anything, he already lost. Sometimes there is such a psychological effect in chess that uh, you know you know you lost you lost you, you start to play carelessly and absolutely brilliantly you know there is such an effect my God he takes f3 he just blunders bishop d3 check right um, wow 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 you see this combo right king g6 bishop d3 bishop f5 and then all right take first knight g6 here take queen f5 and queen g5 right and grab the knight so let's see how this works out Fabi just blundered but okay he won the match he had nothing to prove um all right are you still using um 
All right, don't watch movies. You should move, you should watch movies. You know, I mean, those are kind of cool. Uh, yeah, they're very similar. Again, about the professionals, there's a very famous saying: the professionals build Titanic, and the amateur build the uh, Ark. Right? Again, a lot of a lot of stuff like that. I know it's kind of kind of kind of cheesy. Yeah, it's kind of cheesy, but still. Um, days of big money games or over. Pool. Do you see Firuza made in Nether surprise Anish yesterday? Game 3. I have seen so many games. Uh, the only game that comes to mind by Firuza that really stands out so far in this tournament is his mating attack against uh, Magnus. That Queen G4, Queen G6 mate thing, right? That, that's kind of the only memorable game that stands uh, for me. Uh, he played quite a lot of uh, great games though. Uh, Anish also. So far his only win that stands against me is basically against Magnus. All right, and um, and that's about it. Yeah, I I don't play pool unfortunately. When I was in college, uh, a lot of my uh, classmates were playing pool in Subo. That's the uh, student union building in um, at Brooklyn College. That's where I went to college too. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately for me. That student union building also had a huge arcade. My god. And of course, if you guys remember, it was also the early... What? It was early 90s, right? So you guys remember the game, a certain game called the Street Fighter that just came out. And it was like number one game in the arcade. And then also Solid Metal Gear, right? You guys remember? Do you realize, guys, how many hours I wasted playing that game? Instead of, you know, finding a girlfriend or hanging out with my friends. My god. I was spending all the time playing Street Fighter. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Solid Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Uh, looking back, I was like, realized I was such a big idiot. Yeah. Alright. But on the other hand, you know, everything that happens, happens for, for a reason. And I'm very happy with what I have right now. Especially who was sent to me to share my current life with. So I'm thankful to God for that. Alright, so let's see. So this is the line that we saw, right? And uh, black is lost. Yeah. So it's a consolation win for, um, for Maxim. E3, it's a huge thing here, so we see, is he still playing? Is Fabi still playing? Yeah, he might as well resign though. There's no way he can, you know, it's a pure knight, extra knight, pure piece, right? Knight of one, just probably resigns here. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back here. Oh, we see this line. I don't know. All right, thank you for following uh, Bomberman by Namco. Yeah. Get like... Really? Yeah. I mean, oh my god, those... those oh, those games. <laughs> I actually remember one very good time when I went to... I actually skipped the class in college because... Um, some reason uh, the uh, student union building didn't have the latest uh, Street Fighter, and uh, you know they all, they kept coming up with some all sorts of new stuff like Alpha, right, and then Zero, and then all those prequels and sequels stuff. So I went to this uh, New York City uh, Manhattan. I went to the city center, and they had some famous um, arcade there, right, and. Um, Right. I, I didn't play Doom because uh, I, I couldn't play shooters because I, I, I'm kind of seizure prone, so those were bad for me. So I went to Manhattan to play in so, so, somewhere there, and I think there were some professionals, actually, who played in those World Championships, right, online. Remember, even the, those speeds, at 57k speeds, uh, most of the guys usually went to the university for the good internet connection, of course, but some guys actually played, like, there was some net, you know, where you play Street Fighter or something. And what happened is that, you know, okay, I'm just an amateur, you know, I just play, like, you know, for fun, don't play. So I'm uh, one one uh, black dude, you know, he decides to join the game that I'm playing, he decides to play me. And then, you know, I sort of do this amateurish combo thing, like, you know, two-hit combo. 
and then he's like why and he's like what what are you doing man and then he, he tells me like what are you doing man that's not how you play you, you know you play to win you, you do the combo right you do the combo thing and then he you know i was slightly ahead yeah and then he did this massive combo with the uh, um with this balrog with the book boxer guy right he evaded that thing he evaded my uh hadouken right and then he just hit me jab jab then middle hit or some hard hit and then and i was like boom and it was like i lost like half of my life right there and he said like that's how you play <laughs> and i said okay <laughs> all right i've seen the professional all right um yeah yeah okay i'm not the doom guy yeah actually so i actually did watch the movie yeah i watched the movie the doom I kind of like uh, the movies based on games, so that was pretty cool. Although I absolutely hated that uh, Mortal Kombat in the 90s movies. Oh my god, it was so cheesy. So cheesy. So cheesy. That was as... Uh, uh, you know, Christopher Lambert was my favorite actor, but when I saw him, the role of the... Uh, that uh, Lightning Lord, right? I was like... I was like... <laughs> oh my god, how did you sign up for that role? <laughs> Uh, don't really enjoy computer. Yeah, so they come like it. Yeah, it's true. Is it uh, true that I learned how to play chess in the Russian park while watching others playing? That is not true. No, that is not true, man. So resigned. Yes, yes, one zero. Well, good job uh, for both players. Um, tough loss by Fabi, but he won the match fair and square. He applied pressure. He he really clicked that. Uh, he really hit that clock thing uh, with the small advantages and made um, Max and lose on time. Lose, uh, you know, blunder right by 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 that threat of flagging him right. So um, really good job. So 94. We see here this is the pretty much equal position. I think Black is actually slightly better now. So so we're gonna look at this game. And uh, what is the score, by the way? The score is what? One dink, draw, dink, draw, draw. Oh my god, they have all draws. Yeah, okay, but guys, these are, in my opinion, to be honest, these guys are absolute top players in the world right now. Hikaru, that he didn't qualify for the candidates, is his own fault. He, d he should be there. He deserves it, for sure. He deserves it. We all know that he deserves, but you know he's uh, he gets really emotional sometimes. We can all see that on his um, you know uh, tr uh, transmissions, right? On on his Twitch, you know he reacts really really emotionally, and uh, that that is, you you gotta be poker man. You gotta be poker. You you, you gotta you gotta, you gotta qualify for the candidates. He has huge talent. Right. Um, retro games. Yes. One of my old, old, all the time favorite retro games. Something, you know, a couple of years ago, I actually installed that uh, virtual thing on my computer, right? That let me allow to play all those games. And one of the all time favorites, the actual, the first game that I played in the US that actually bought me into the arcade stuff, it was Strider, right? You guys all know it, of course. So that was beautiful, gorgeous classics, right? Beautiful music, absolutely everything, just gorgeous. That game got me so hard into gaming at all. That was the first game. And I'm not even gonna mention... Uh, okay, Tetris makes a, respect, a respectable uh, mention, right? I mean, Tetris, come on, guys. We all know Tetris, right? We all played it once, once or twice. Um, yesterday, Petersburg quote, like, London Kamsky line. Okay. Who inspired me to play London? Actually, it was my father. I didn't know it was London. I actually played it first when I was around 9, I think. 9 or 10, right? Because I kept getting to bad positions with white, so my dad actually asked me one day, so, dude, you like... What is your favorite opening that you play with black? And I said, I like to play against Reti, I play the system, and he said, like, okay, but can't you play it with white, and then you get extra tempo or something? And then I thought about it, and then, yeah, damn right, let's try it. Is debunk, you can check YouTube about it. About what? Um, what, 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 what? What did I miss? Uh, have seen all the YouTube docs. Um, ooh, 
Dota 2 winnings are like in the millions. That is true, but you have a team there. And if you play Dota, I actually watched, uh, I watched the last um, three uh, internationals, starting with the 2015. All right, no, no, starting to probably was 2016, 17 and 18. I watched those, I didn't watch last year, but I, I watched those internationals and then I watched some interviews and the top players said that if you play Dota, you got to play Dota all the time, right? You need that practice, you need to follow on everything. It's like professional chess. You have to dedicate it to 100% of your time, like any other job, right? Uh, emulators have advantages. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, thank you, Chessful, for the mention of my game against Gary. I um, appreciate that you like the game. I actually analyzed it in my book uh, collection, which you can see on my... Um, if you scroll down below the, uh, the um, you know, the Twitch window, right? Um, right next to my bio, I think, right? You, there's a link to to my publisher. And if you click on it, uh, there is uh, you're gonna get a choice um, where you can buy a single book or two books. And I think they actually asked me to mention that there is a 15 percent 15 percent off if you buy uh, the those books um, until the end of the month, which is basically ends in two days, right? Um, CS Go from uh, I played it in the pro level. Oh, I see. Yeah, CSGO is like a um, huge, huge, uh, yeah, it's like a lot of people, yeah, do the, the, those esports thing uh, on professional level. It's very competitive though, yeah, very competitive, just like chess though. Uh, so it's a draw, so we're going to go into the Armageddon. Uh, we're going to go into the Armageddon. The Armageddon, is it set up? No, it is not set up. All right, we're waiting for the Armageddon to get set up. And... Um, you bought both and highly recommend. Billy Mitchell streams on Twitch, by the way. Um, yeah, you gotta be in good shape to, to play against the best, right? I mean, there is such a thing in chess also. You can be a top player, but you can be in a bad form in a concrete tournament, which is the reason why Gelfand and Kramnik, they all specialized in this um, concept that um, a lot of the tournaments, they look at the simple training, but the one that has that is a qualifier, you have to come to the tournament at your absolute best shape. And Gelfand was especially especially good at that. He always came to the tournaments where he had to qualify in his best shape, and he almost always qualified. Because that was one tournament where you cannot fail, right? It's like you can win all those in Dodo things, like you can win all those regionals, masters, right? But the one absolutely one tournament where you have to be at your best is the international, right? Um, Spawn, yeah, I, 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 I read about it, um, I read about it, but I didn't actually watch that one. No, I didn't watch that one. Nope. Hellboy 1, maybe I did watch, but Spawn, yeah, I didn't. Um, yeah, I'm talking about the best chess players because this difference, because they're also good, right? The difference in being in a good form, which means, when I'm talking about being in a good form, it means... Um, you can calculate well, you, you make uh, correct decisions, you know, you are um, noticing all the details, you're not blundering stuff, and uh, everything goes smoothly, right? You feel like chess is easy. Yeah, and, and you get that feeling. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that, that's what it means when you're in a good form. It means also when you get surprised, you, you, you have calculating ability and confidence to actually you know, out-calculate your opening preparation or find some move, some line they, they haven't considered. And that is called the good form. And the bad form is uh, is when you have everything going, you have your preparation set, you, you know all the lines, but then the moment you start playing your own game, you find that it is extremely difficult to calculate stuff. You, you find that you're missing your opponent moves, right? So those things uh, are actually extremely important at the top level. So being in a form is extremely important concept for a top chess players. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, winning an important tournament is the same for the chess players. It is the same, man. It gives you this huge rush, right? It's like a runner's rush, almost. Almost. 
this feeling of victory, of um, getting through, that's what uh, separates the, um, the sport, uh, the chess players that are, you know, chess is a sport, right? You have to admit it, chess is a sport, it's not an old man game really, especially with all the fast time controls. So yes, chess is a sport and uh, you need a lot of sport qualities to succeed. Physically, yes. But if you play Slav, not many Karakan, but Rayu Lopo, Lopez uh, and, and Khan, yes. Well, I played the Sicilian Khan mostly, right? And uh, I played a lot of Spanish game, that's true, uh, because Spanish is very solid, right? And uh, against D4, I played Slav, but then I started playing... I also played, used to play Nimzu, but then I kind of slowed down when I discovered Dutch. And of course, I played a lot of Grunfeld when I was younger, so um, yeah. So you gotta play all those. You gotta know all those openings if you're planning to make it big in chess, because um, it's like meta, right? In esport, you're following the current meta, meta, right? You gotta know that stuff. You gotta know what is the best, uh, all those nuances, right? So it's chess meta, right? You gotta know your what's the, what's the most popular opening. Why is it opening? Why is it popular? What is the current op popular line? Yes, there is a meta in chess, really. That's what the openings are. Literally, same thing. What do you think Grunfeld is? <laughs> Come on, man. It's been meta since uh, Gary Kasparov days, right? It still is. But it's like old school, right? Um, so. Okay. Well, it's a good thing I I I'm, I'm I actually played some a lot of games in my life, because I find a lot of uh, correlations uh, very useful when comparing all the stuff to chess, right? And I'm finding a lot of similarities. And actually, like Kramnik, remember the way he founded Berlin Wall, right? He mentioned in, in one of his interviews that he was actually looking at the hockey match, right? And in, in hockey, it's pretty pretty standard idea. To neutralize your opponent's setup, right? His strength, uh, his strongest uh, players, right? So you sort of build like this wall, protective wall or prophylactic wall, whatever you call it. And that's the way he got this idea. He's just gonna block, uh, block Gary's preparation E4. Yeah, ice hockey, right? Uh, that's that's how Kramnik got this idea. You guys, you gotta you gotta keep up with all those top player interviews. You gotta you gotta keep up uh, because they sometimes uh, you know drop uh, brilliant stuff. You gotta, you gotta read, you gotta read that, which is why they don't really uh, like being interviewed because they know sometimes you know they might drop stuff which their opponents will find absolutely useful. So, but if you do manage to get some players to open up, that's absolutely absolutely priceless. So where is this game? Uh, I don't see the tiebreaker. Armageddon game started. Where? Where? Oh, there you go. Ooh, all right. Lee Chess, where's your Armageddon game, man? Yeah. I don't see it. My God. All right, so let's see it. G3, English opening. Uh, Hikaru is pretty lucky. He got the black color, which means he can draw, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll look at this line with... Um... All right, sorry, never mind. <laughs> all right, just let's say I looked at this line recently. And uh, it seems that I wasn't the only one. Yeah, black is completely fine here. Um, is there a game? Come on, guys. Lee Chess. Lee Chess, where's your uh, tiebreaker? Guys. My god. Never choose black in Armageddon, so this should be interesting. Alright, Naka says a lot of things. He, he is a great actor. You know, guys have to... What do you have to know about Naka? He is a great actor. He is uh, perhaps uh, the greatest actor there is right now in chess. Um, absolutely priceless. Um, yeah, incredible actor. Lee Chess, best chess side. Yes, it is. It is not. I'm not saying it's best, but they don't have the Armageddon game, right? They don't. My god. Better step up. D4, E4. All right, they're trying to get me to play some uh, streamer battles, some team championships. I don't know. I'm probably not. Yeah. Ooh, King F3, Mike. Whoa. We got street fighting here, guys. 
Um, all right, we got we got some real fast moves. The chest bomb computer stockfish is not in time. Uh, I like white's position though. I like white's position because um, his rooks are on the open files. White controls the this move though. Um, Ooh, rook c8, queen c8, queen e4, king e2 wins, right? So rook c8 is impossible. I mean, white wants to play rook queen d3, uh, but after rook d8, um, ooh, I don't know. I think black should be okay. Maybe white is slightly better. King g2 is a very safe move. Black really wants to, white wants to trade the queens because his end game is better. Oh, he just uh, played b5, queen d3, okay. Isn't king a bit out in the, and oh yeah, ding lost. He lost, he blundered this queen b7. My god, L look at that uh, Hikaru trick, right? Yeah, he managed to find this um, unbelievable king g2. Boom, Nakamura wins the game. Because Ding blunders the tactic. It's 0-1. Zero, 0-1, one. Zero, one, rook e5. Um, wow, look at that tactic. Look at that tactic. Ding, let's see the Ding face. I want to see his face. Yeah, this is a disaster for him. I mean, playing so well, such a match, but, uh, you know, Naka playing Blitz is uh, in, a, in a league of his own when he plays Blitz. That's got a, got a, got an honest a statement there. See, Queen B7. Yeah, they both know it. They both know it. Ding is lost. Rook D2, Rook E5, yeah. See, Ding is not happy. Oh, queen e4. No, no, no. But queen e4, rook d5, and then? Why, why, why is he shaking his head? Why is he shaking his head? Yeah, 0 1. Alright. So it's game over. Naka wins. What was the tactic? You can find it. He missed, uh, he missed this uh, b5 uh, and queen b7. Pin, right? He missed the spin. And if rook d2, rook e5 just wins the rook. So basically, Ding blundered the whole rook. Right? That was bloody interesting. After f5, look at this position. Uh, d5 um, actually is okay, right? So uh, let's go back here for a second. Take. Um, all right, rook takes, rook d8. So king g2 was a bad move. You have to take on d8 first and then um, play bishop b6 or king g2 because uh, white is actually better here in this position because his bishop makes more sense and his pieces are ready to attack some queenside pawns, etc. I mean, but it's not such a huge advantage, though. The ding plays knight and sometimes it's up to three at night. So I kind of feel bad. Yeah. All right, so um, there you go. Naka beats him with the tactic. Ding smith blunders the rook. And that's your, um, that's your stream for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, the commentary. Hopefully you all enjoyed the, um, the chat. And... Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. All right. Stay safe, my friends. Goodbye.